an unusual subject is what our bishop gave me and I want to take it from the scriptural point of view by starting with an incredible scripture found in Acts chapter 26 Acts 26 one of the scriptures I later in our career began to consider seriously why such a verse should be in the Bible. I'm not sure some of you have at any time asked yourself, is there a verse like this in the Bible? And then you come across it. Is found in Acts chapter 26. I read verse 7 and 8. Unto which promise are twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I'm accused of the Jews. Verse 8. Why should it be taught a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead. To all of you who are English, that's a very strong scripture. Stand to your feet. Ask somebody, why do you think God should not raise the dead? Oh Lord God, are you with me? Why do you think it's not possible for God to raise the dead? Say that. Please talk loud. You are not us. Talk loud in English. One, two, go. Paul used the word, why do you think it's incredible for God to raise the dead? Why do you think it's out of place? Let's, let's read it together so you can Memorize it in your head. Verse 8. Acts, let's say Acts 26. Acts 26. Am I speaking English tonight? Yes. Acts 26. Say that to everybody. Acts 26. One more time. Acts 26. Verse 8. Now put it together. Acts 26 verse 8. Want to go. Why should it be taught a thing incredible with you? That God should raise the dead. If that's all I'm able to teach tonight, I've scored a very big point as a teacher. He's asking all of us, what do you think is beyond reach? Or it's a surprise for God to raise the dead. Why? The word why is enough. You believe that God can heal headache? How many of you believe that? Very easy. You believe that God can stop coughing? You believe that? Very easy. You believe that God can heal fever? Very easy. Most of the things you believe are not visible. Those things you believe are minor. A doctor like this can tell you it's a serious one. I've seen people killed by fever. I've seen someone die of headache. I've seen someone die of belly trouble. Every sickness, once it's called sick, it kills. It is in our hands that they are categorized into stages, standards, and strength. But as far as God is concerned, sickness is sickness, minor or major. Sit down. All right. It's the same thing people who believe that God saved their soul, but He cannot prosper them. It depends on where you are operating, the environment of your knowledge. There are many who believe 
that God can save, but God cannot heal in churches today. Very common. Many denominations believe the days of miracle are over. But when you come to a wrong place like this, you find it's not over yet. If you believe the Bible, you are in the right place. Yes. But if you don't believe in the Bible, you are in the wrong church with the wrong pastor in the wrong ministry. This is a good scripture. Why do you think it's incredible for God to raise the dead? Do you know that when I read this, I read another scripture that said, Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world. Before he was born, he died. That, those are scriptures that you don't read in England. Even in Africa, very few pastors can preach it. Jesus that was crucified before the foundation of the world. How can he die before he was born? Because that's what the Bible says. And for you to believe that he died before he was born, you have to ask who said so. You believe that? Yes. Have you heard that before? Yes. Jesus was crucified before the foundation of the world. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Things like that are in the Bible. Why? He wasn't born yet, he died. He was crucified, slain. Up to Isaiah. 700 years before he was born. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace were laid on him. By his tribe we are healed. He wasn't born yet. Wounded. For you to face the subject of raising the dead, I want to start from far, far behind. Number one, I want to state categorically, it is not a ministry. Raising the dead is not a calling. Say, I'm called to raise the dead. No. No man is called by God, specifically given the subject, thou shalt be raising the dead. I have been privileged to raise nine people from the dead, but I don't have a signboard. If I had a signboard of raising the dead, I would not be here in England tonight. And I can name the nine beginning with my wife. That's nearer the, the one you will see in two weeks' time. She, she will be here. So, it's not a ministry. Let's just establish that. So you are not going to live here and say, Idahosa told me my ministry is to raise the dead. I don't have the ministry of raising the dead myself, even though I've seen nine. If I was aware that those dead would rise the day they were raised from the dead, I would have gone with camera crew, newspapers, so I can get the glory. If I can raise two people from England, I would never be poor for the rest of my life. Oh God. I go and look for where they buried John F. Kennedy. And tell the Kennedy family, where's your father? Two billion. They give me. But God never notified me. I did it by accident, it happened by right. Amen. Poor English. But very good. All right. So, I like to say that, number one, no one should take glory for raising the dead. For it is the will of God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. It happened in the Old Testament. The first one of the first scriptures where the dead were raised in the Old Testament is found in 2 Kings. I'm going to take you throughout the Bible tonight so you don't quote me when I'm gone, but you quote God. 2 Kings. I just hope that is in your Bible. 2 Kings. Chapter 4, fourth chapter of Second Kings. Look at your Bible very well tonight. It's not too long. We are told in the following verses. In verse are you in chapter 4 now? Okay. 
verse 18. When the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out of his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said, Lo, and he said to the lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Well, the first death is not this scripture. First death is in Genesis. Two brothers, Cain and Abel. That's in your Bible. Okay? There was no ministry by any prophet at that time. The Bible was too new. And God didn't want to start life by raising the dead. But the blood of Abel cried. That's resurrection. I'm not sure you are hearing what I'm saying tonight. The Bible says his blood cried from the ground. If he, did, if he died and was absent in totality, his blood would not have cried. That's resurrection, but not visible. His blood rose from the dead. His body was buried, but his blood was alive. Resurrection first. But the visible resurrection, I think this is number two. This one I'm reading to you now. All right. Look at the next verse. Verse 20. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. Verse 22. She called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore, wherefore, would thou go to him to, today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And, he, and she said, It shall be well. Then she saddled and asked and said unto her servant, Drive, go forward, slack not thy riding for me except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God, to man Kamel. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shodamite woman. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with thy child? And she answered, It is well. Verse 27. When she came to the man of God, to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to choose her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed with her. And the Lord had hid it from me, and had not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Guide up thy leons and take my staff in thy hand and go thy way if thou meet any man salute him not and if any man salute thee answer him not again and lay my staff upon the face of the child the mother of the child said as the lord liveth as thy soul liveth i will not leave thee and he arose and followed her and gehazi passed on by before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child but there was neither voice nor hearing wherefore he went again to meet him and told him saying the child is not awake when elijah elisha was come into the house behold the child was dead and laid upon his bed he went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the lord and he went up and laid upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hand, and he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child was warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Visible resurrection. Elisha. Of the 16 miracles that Elijah did, raising the dead was not one of them. 
But of the 31 miracles, for the 32nd that was done in his absence, that's a different subject altogether. Elisha asked for a double portion of the gift that God gave to Elijah. He performed 31 miracles. One of them was the raising of the dead. Another miracle that I want to quickly refer to for the purpose of the subject of raising the dead is the death of Isaac that God replaced with Ram. Yet the Bible says he was crucified and God raised him from the dead. That one didn't die physically but God said he died. And when God said died, he died. But this is a visible one. The child died. Elisha was called for by the Shunammite woman. I didn't ask you for a child. Now he's dead. Give him back to me. First knowledge here is that there must be a demand. And there must be an urge. And there must be a will. And where there's a demand, there's a will, there'll be a way. Come give my son back to me. The story is easy here. He followed. Well, Gehazi wanted to do it for a show. You sent me, I did it. But Elisha was the one needed by God. Gehazi could not finish his race. It would have been the only miracle he did before he became leprous. But Elisha went with the woman and the way it was done is spelled out here. God, the first and foremost, the woman took the child, laid on the man of God's bed, believing that in that bed, is a resurrection power. Went to the man of God, brought him in, and the man of God met the child on his own bed in the house, apartment that the woman and her husband built for him. Came in and did all that the Bible said here. And the scripture said, he sneezed seven times. His body warmed up, and he came back to life. First, authentic resurrection in the Bible. Old Testament. There are others. But in the New Testament, Jesus also raised the dead. You know enough of that in the Bible. You know enough of the resurrection of the dead in the Bible? How many people Jesus raised from the dead? He raised the damn cell, which was my first challenge. Paul raised the dead in Acts of Apostles. But before we go into all those ones, let me read to you the scriptures that dealt with the power of raising the dead. Let's go straight to Matthew chapter 10. You shall read. It's a subject. Matthew 10. Everybody say Matthew 10. Yeah. When he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Verse 8. Heal the sick. Say that to everybody. Heal okay. the sick. Verse 1. Do you believe that? I mean, you, you are hearing there that he gave them power against unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal all manner any kind of disease and all manner of sickness verse 8 heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely ye have received freely what? Give, oh Lord. 
is part of the scripture. Before I come to the, this day's example, Jesus gave it as instruction that the sick should be healed, lepers should be cleansed, the dead should be raised. So it's not a wrong subject or a foul thing. Matthew 11. Are you there? Yes. Verse 1. It came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Verse 2. When John had heard in the prison the work of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Are thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Verse 4. Let me start, stop in verse 1 and 2. John got disgusted. John got discouraged. John put himself in trouble. John was a preacher of all you do wrong. No mercy in his message. He was a iniquity discoverer. But he prophesied. He said, I show you your sin, but Jesus takes it away. Every sin John saw, he pointed it out. But he said, behold the Lamb of God that takes it away. I show it to you, God takes it away. It's a ministry. John was a sin pointer. Jesus was a sin taker. Now who will you follow out of the two? The man who show you how bad you are? Or the man who turned you from bad to good? All right. You don't care. It's all right. I just asked, who will you follow? The man who says, you are terrible. Or the man who says, I can turn your terrible situation to terrific. Thank you, two people. Which one will you follow? That's ten people. Which one will you follow? All right. John, show it to you. Jesus takes it from you. John saw the sin that Herod committed with Herodian. And said it. Many things Jesus saw that have taught me a lesson. A pastor that wants to have a growing church must be merciful in his message. And I, I show you an example of the, one of the worst sins. A woman was caught in the, in the act of adultery. They brought her before Jesus. The Pharisees and Sadducees said, she was caught in the very act. Every time I preach that subject, I love it. She was caught in the very act. What did you go there to do when you caught her? You didn't hear what I'm saying. You who caught her. That's not your house. That was her house. What took you there? To catch her in the very act. She must have been your old customer. And the reason you came to report is that she missed you and followed another man. That's how I teach it at home. Because if you, if, if you caught her in the very act, she was not in your house, what were you there to do? Do I make sense to you? Because if you caught her, you must have had the spare key of her door. That's strong. Well, this is for only married people. That's okay then. <laughs> Huh? You, you have the spare key to her room. When you opened another man was there, you were very disappointed. <laughs> so what you did was to go and tell Jesus, see what I saw. And Jesus said, okay, no problem. How many of you? Seven. One. On Monday, David, you were there. On Tuesday, John, you were there. On Wednesday, Simon, you were dead. On Thursday, the Bible said, when they looked down and saw their names, the stone that they raised, they put it down. And Jesus said, fine, go and sin no more. How did that one come in? How did this subject come in? John's behavior and Christ's behavior. Mercy and pardon. Are you hearing me? Okay. 
But John put himself in trouble and he was put in prison awaiting to be killed. But he heard all that Jesus was doing. He got very troubled. Why did Jesus not come here to bail me out? It was not John, it was not Jesus that sent him to prison. His mouth and his poor gospel. And when you are a pastor that's only a sin discoverer and not a sin forgiver, your church will never grow. It doesn't matter how much you preach hell. And if you preach hell too much, many of your members don't make heaven. I hope somebody's hearing what I'm saying tonight. If you preach poverty too much, there have been no many cars in the front of your church if you love poverty. If you love sickness, many of your members would not be well. We're on the subject tonight, raising the dead. Look at verse, John, God discovered his son for Christ. Verse 3, Matthew eleven three. 3. He said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them whom he sent, Go and show John again. Somebody say again. Yeah. One miracle is not enough. More than one is good. Show him again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf here, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. Now you can shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus said, beside the sight for the blind, strength to the lame feet, cleansing for lepers, hearing for the deaf, of the gospel is that the dead are raised up. Amen. Did you catch that? Yes. It's part of his ministry. It's part of the gospel. Look at John chapter 2. He commissioned us raise the dead. He preached it. It's part of the gospel. But John chapter 2 Look at how it affected himself. Part of himself. John chapter 2. Verse 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign shalt thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Power for himself to raise himself. Not only to others, but himself. If you kill me, according to Jesus, three days' time, I will raise it up. He said, this one promise have I received of my father. I have power to lay down my life and I have power to pick it up again. Himself. Beside raising others, he has guaranteed for himself that his body will not see corruption. You should like that. Amen. Amen. So slow and the rest didn't even respond. But it's good. I say it's good. Alright, John chapter 5. Just follow me. Don't worry, you are not the one teaching. John chapter 5. Verse 19. John chapter 5. Are you there already? answered Jesus and said unto them verily verily I say unto you the son can do nothing of himself but what he said the father do for what things soever he doeth 
These also dwell the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showed him all things that himself dwell, and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. 21. For the Father raised up the dead, and quickened them, even so the Son quickened whom he will. Not only disciples, thank God, not only Jesus, but God himself raised the dead. Is that too strong for you? I'm asking, is that too strong? This is Jesus speaking. The work of raising the dead is a work of marvel. Bringing the dead back to life is a marvel. But it's part of the gospel. When you go nearer to God, he shows you what to do. He tells you when to do it. He backs what he promised. The son of himself can do nothing. But whatever he hears the father say, he does. And whatever the father bid him to do, the raising the dead must be under divine command. Say big amen now. Amen. I know you don't like it, but say it once in a while. Amen. Try one more time. Amen. Try it louder. Amen. The Lord can tell you. Raise the dead. Jesus said, I only do it because the Father has done it. And he has given me power to do it. Hallelujah. 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 And more than that, I want to say this, a day is coming, all of us will be raised from the dead. Amen. The Bible said, the dead shall rise first. And we which are alive, those of you who die, you will die. Those of us who refuse to die will be here. When the trumpet sound, you come up from the grave, we who are standing here. All right, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah. Acts 2. See whether that is in your Bible. Some of the subjects that helped me as a young preacher. Verse 30 is the main thing we want to read. But we have to read what led to that. Verse 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had, had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his leon, according to the flesh, he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Seen, he seen this before. Uh, uh, is that in your Bible? Verse 30. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had so with an oath to him that of the fruit of his leon, according to the flesh, he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Do you believe that Jesus died? Yes. Please answer me. Say yes. yes. Okay, I'll be telling you what to say now. Say yes. yes. Jesus died. Say he died. But he, he rose again. He rose now, now, he's sitting, he's sitting on, the on the throne at the right hand the of the Father. The same Jesus. Before he died, he said that you may know that the Son of Man had power on the earth. But when he rose from the dead, he said, All power in heaven and on earth is given to me. His resurrection that gave him dual power in heaven and on earth. Before he died, Son of Man had power on the earth. But when he rose, he possessed the two powers. All right. Acts 26 was the one I read to you before. It's not incredible for God to raise the dead. You can read that for 
clearer understanding. And if what you read is right, we can now go to Romans chapter 4. Romans 4. Ha. Romans 4. Are you there? Yes. Verse 17, as it is written, Have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed even God, who quickened the dead, and called those things which be not as though they were. God quickened and called them. 18, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 21, he staggered not at the promise of God, through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. 22. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. 23. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. 24. But for us also, to whom it was imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, 25, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Resurrection is the only reason you are saying praise God tonight. If there was no resurrection, all the songs they sang here tonight is ceremony. So not only that raising the dead is scriptural, is the only reason why we are here. I'm sure that's beneficial to you. I think I'm conveying the right thing to you. If Jesus did rise, all the song we sang tonight wasted. If Jesus was still in the grave, I would not be here tonight. So it's more, it's more than just talking of ordinary people dead. We are considering the life that death has produced. By the resurrection of Christ, our justification is assured. Yes. And not only that our justification is assured, is a hope of eternal life. Yes. For if Christ rise not from the dead, serving God is a waste. Thank God for that one amen. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians. Corinthians first. The 15th chapter. Are you there now? Verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. 11. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach. And so ye believe. 12. Now if Christ be preached, that he rose from the dead. How say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Paul is saying here, before we get to 14 and 15, that even in the church, some people still believe there's no raising of the dead. 
including the raising of Christ from the dead. The argument has been there. It will continue to be there. But there's no proof that God didn't raise Jesus from the dead. Verse 14. <sighs> and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. And our faith is also vain. Verse 15. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. Look at this same scripture. If the dead, ordinary people, okay, Angel, you are here, Bishop, you are here. If we don't believe in the raising of other people, that of Christ is not authentic. It's as strong as that. It's as strong as that. Now, question How many of you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead? Raise your hand and say, I believe. I believe. Say it louder. I believe. And the Bible is saying that. If other deaths are not raised, that of Christ is not as important. Or, or, or it's arguable in law, my barrister. That's arguable. You can argue. If only the death of Christ is the only dead raised, it's questionable. Let's look at the scripture again. Very simple. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. Verse 16. Meaning what? In English, Jesus is not the end of resurrection. You can join me to say big amen. amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he's the first fruit to rise from the dead. And because he rose from the dead, we also expect resurrection. No matter how long I want to live, sincerely or jokingly, it's appointed to every man who wants to die. It doesn't matter what injection is given to me by doctors. It doesn't matter how many oxygens are fixed in my body to keep me here. I must keep my appointment. Because with the flesh, no eye shall see God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? No. Everyone will keep their appointment. Kings and queens have come and gone. Prime ministers and presidents have come and gone. Preachers of the highest order have come and gone. As a matter of fact, when you begin to get old in the ministry, you start to get disengaged to get ready for that death. You may deny you don't want to die, but inside you there's assurance <laughs> that you are going to die. <laughs> Why people like me preach life and health and strength so often is to give you hope to live long. Because if I say, oh, very soon I'm going to die, many of you will not serve God again. So it's better for me to tell you, no death yet. Amen. amen. I say amen. amen. And that's guaranteed to me, no dying yet. Amen. Having said that, I've established to you from Old Testament to the New Testament. Death and resurrection is scriptural. But now let's look at some few scriptures that I want to consider. Mark 137. To help you, just in case you want to try it. <laughs> it will be very difficult for a, a British Christian. <laughs> and almost all Christians. Well, look at what the Bible says. 
Mark chapter 1. Ha. All right. Let me read some of the scriptures. Verse 27, Mark 1, 27. And they were all amazed in so much that they were questioning among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Fought with? Fought with? When they were come out of synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon, Andrew, and James, and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever upon an anon, and they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. Verse 33. And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many that were sick of divers diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak. Because they knew him. Verse 25. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. When, and when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek thee. He said unto them, let us go into the next town, that I may preach there also, for there I came forth. Jesus was a constant healer. Jesus healed all manners of sickness, including those at the point of death. That's what I'm establishing in that place. No matter how near you are to death, even when you could no more speak, he will still pray for you. Praying for the sick, you may not believe, but I want to say this for common knowledge's sake. Many of the people that have been healed in this ministry would have been in the grave if they were not healed. Amen. The fact that they didn't die before they were healed does not mean they would not have been dead by now. Raising the dead is an improvement of the sick. That's a good English. <laughs> because if you were not raised on time, we would have been dead. So that should not astonish you that somebody rose from the dead. Because there are many, many, many who would have been in the grave by now if they didn't receive healing. If they did not receive resurrection from that sickness. If the spirit of death was not bound before Professor Yahweh left home, and many times I've, I pray for people here, you hear me occasionally say, sometimes, you foul desperate, leave this body. It means there was a death beside. It, that, that doesn't mean they were raised, but there was a spirit of death behind the sickness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. So, language will I use that will make you hear what I'm saying? All right? If someone is very, very sick, he was a child in this church, born and almost dead in this place. I think the child is still alive, you know. You remember what I'm talking about, the little child? Doctors gave the child up. God picked him up. Oh, that's a good language. Come on, sir. This one, 21 years ago, no hope. 
21 years later, graduate. She didn't quite get to the grave, but she came back. Whether near it already at the point, the fact that this is an evidence today that she's alive is the working of miracle. Yes. Amen. The God who severed her from death, who brought her from the point of death, is the God that has kept her. Yes. Amen. And many of you have risen from the dead many times yes. without dying totally. I want to establish that to you. Sometimes you were so sick, you were not sure you'll make tomorrow. But somewhere, somehow, the resurrection power of Jesus touched you. Amen. Then you were prayed for, and you are still living. So it's not only when one is buried and come back to life that he actually dies. In medicine, there are some people that are said to be in coma. That's dead. But when the mercy of God reached them, they come back. There are three ways of dying. Dead to be dead. Dead near dead. And die very well. <laughs> Thank you. Alright. Luke chapter 1. I'm saying that it's not only when you get to the grave. Verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Is that in your Bible? Yes. Question. Is there anything too hard for God? No. Matthew 9. Matthew 9. Verse 18. Why he spake these things unto them, behold, here came a certain ruler, and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. What did the man say has happened to the daughter? I said, what did the Bible say happened to the daughter? He died. Verse 27. When Jesus departed thence to the thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou, son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. Verse 37 will tell you another miracle. Verse 35 tell you another, verse 33, another miracle. Verse 35, another miracle. Let me look for the scripture I'm looking for here. Huh? 23. Okay. When Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the mistress and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when the people were put forth, he went in and took her by the hand, and the maid arose. Resurrection. 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 I say resurrection. I'm saying resurrection. 
God is still raising the dead. Somebody say amen. amen. That's the scripture. Matthew 9. Mark chapter 9. Mark. M-A-R-K. The one that concerns you and I. And what helped me. As a young preacher. I'm still young. Somebody say hallelujah. Verse 23. Let's all stand up. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Read it by yourself. One to go. How many things can you do yourself? I say, how many things can you do? Say all things. That's heavy. Say all things. Louder. All things. All things. I read this 35 years ago. All things are possible to him that believe. I read Matthew 10, 8. Heal the sick, raise the dead. I ask question. If you read my life story, fire his bone. Pastor, have you raised the dead before? He said no. Can I do it? He said yes. I took my bicycle from 11 o'clock in the morning till 4 p.m. I was going from house to house. Is anybody dead here? They said no. Oh God. Now that there are many people here. Because the sign of sin, you know that somebody died in Africa was a gathering. Did anybody die here? They say no. What of death? Did anybody dead there? No. Four o'clock, I got to number six or seven, Lawani Street, Benin City. I met them shouting and wailing. What happened? Somebody died. I jumped up. I said, Hallelujah. <laughs> They said, what are you happy for? I said, I've been looking for the dead for the last five hours. <laughs> and they said, here you are. Three years old child. I took the child. Amen, amen. Out of the zeal of ignorance. Hey, 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 hey. Pray. He died more. <laughs> Sweat came on me. I was looking for where to go out. There was only one door and it's blocked. <laughs> oh God why did I tell them it's what I've been looking for since morning I put the dead cops down I turned to the Bible he drove them all out I said okay all of you out and they left <laughs> here's the cops here's the coffee Jesus drove all of them out so I said all of you go out so they left, so that I can find door. <laughs> that was my joy, not, not that I was too sure now the child will rise. I said, out, everybody! Now my eyes are red. <laughs> then I read the scripture. He said, damn sir, I say unto thee, arise. So with the last Samson strength, with nothing to lose <laughs> except to escape, I told the name of the one in the Bible was Damson. So I asked the parent, what's the name of this child? This time I'm, I'm vexed. I'm furious. And they say, no, I say, okay. In the name of Jesus, I know I come up. Now. And by the mercy of God, she passed a scripture on my shirt. And I slapped her three times. You silly thing. Look at my dress. <laughs> I saw my dread before I saw that she was risen from the dead. <laughs> and I began to jump. He's alive! Say, somebody say that. He's alive! He's alive! She's alive! She's alive! She's alive! She's alive! I began to dance, not minding the excreta on my shirt. I was jumping. She's alive. She's alive. She's alive. The whole family began to 
rejoice. And a young man, Andrew, that came with me, began to jump. He's risen. That was my first experience 32, 35 years ago. And after that, well, I brought, the, I brought the lady out when you came to Benin. She's now a mother of seven children. And our church in Benin, Aquarero, is still there. Many of the people raised from the dead that are in Benin, they are still there. Many of them have, many of people who have come. If you come in November, you still see them. It's not fake, it's real. You cannot say you raise somebody from the dead. If you don't, they will sue you. I know many preachers that raise people in the air. Yes, I raised many people from the dead. But when you say, where's one? They say, not here. <laughs> Seven or eight out of those I have witnessed are still alive. And the parents are grateful to meet you tomorrow. Bernard Ekato's son was raised from the dead. A five years old boy. Taken to school. Had fever on the way. Died. The mother went to work to call the father. The father came to my working place six hours later. He said, he can't die. This child cannot die. This child cannot die. He's the only son I have. I said, let's go. I went there. Look at the child. In the name of Jesus, come back. God honored his word again. I saw that one. In Ghana, a man climbed up painting a seven-story building, bank building. And the ladder slipped and head to the ground. Wow. And now the whole crowd ran away. And the Muslim was with me. Mrs. Akwenechin and many other women and my wife were all there. I looked at this head split to two. <clears throat> I didn't know what to do. Suddenly I heard, that's the works of the devil. Call him back. I got the head together. As of his name, call him three times. And the fourth time, he answered. Today, is a living witness. And it's not a preacher. And General Achapong, the head of state of Ghana, gave me national honor for raising that man back to the dead. To raise the dead is scriptural. But don't do it unless God tells you. <laughs> I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. I've seen many places they come and call me and say, can you raise the dead today? I say, no. That's not what I came for. But can it still happen? The answer is yes. Under the urge and persuasion of the Holy Spirit. It's not for a show. It's for demonstration. Amen. That Christ has not changed. The sick, the blind see, deaf hear, dumb speak, the dead are, the word in English are, means more than one. Am I right in law? Are. A-R-E. Are. Raised. You can do it. I say you can do it. I say you can do it. Many of our Bible students have heard me preach this and in anger they go out. Some of them get results, some of them get them get failures. But many of them get more results than the failure. Finally, I want to say this. If it's only the death of Christ that is resurrection, our gospel is not complete. According to Corinthians. The resurrection of Christ is first. Many more resurrection. And one day, you will be the final resurrection yourself as a proof. Join hands together with somebody.
Holy Spirit, you have not changed. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you have not changed. Hebrew 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Thank you for the privilege of knowing that you who died nearly 2,000 years ago is a part of the church today. I pray that no one will be afraid to raise the dead. And I pray that no one will boastfully go look for dead to rest. But wisdom and understanding, we will glorify you. Thank you. That you are not the God of the dead, but the God who raised the dead. And to us, it is possible. For with God, all things are possible. And to him that believes, nothing shall be impossible. Thank you for this subject today. I pray that wherever they will hear this message, wisdom will be applied to do what you say can be done and to stand up on your word that you have not changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament and the great commission that we should preach, teach, heal, and raise the dead. Thank you, Lord, for the completeness of your word. In Jesus' name, let every one of us say, Amen. 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 Say, amen. 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 I say, amen. amen. I'm saying, amen. amen. Before I give the microphone back to our bishop, let me read the scripture. Jesus said to the disciples, in Mark 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, for he that believeth not shall be damned. If what you heard tonight, you don't believe it, you'll be damned. Don't be damned. I did my best to explain the scripture. If you can't raise the dead, heal the sick. If you can't heal the sick, open blind eyes. If you can't open blind, cleanse lepers. If you can't cleanse lepers, open deaf ears or stop deaf ears. Maybe that ear. To be deaf ears, to die in the ear. I hope you are hearing me. There are many parts of the body we are permitted to raise from the dead. If, I know you are not afraid, but if these two legs were to be dead, when the Bible says, make the limb to walk, that part of the body was dead. If he walks, half of his body has been raised to death. Then to the man who is deaf, part of his body is dead, ear. When he hears, there's a resurrection to his head. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There are many splintered parts of the body that we are permitted before the totality. If this eye were closed and it opened, that blind eye. Blind eye means dead eye. If you open, that's a resurrection to the eyeball. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. There are many parts of the body you can raise to the dead if you can't raise the whole. I think I'm making it easy now. <laughs> if what other part of the body can die? All parts, actually. Head can die without the heart stopping. If you can heal the head, that's a resurrection to the head. 
If you can heal the waist, that's a resurrection. If the hand is paralyzed, and she says, for your hand, and the dead hand come back to life, even though it was not the whole body that died, that's a resurrection to that hand. Yes. Am I making it easy enough for you? Yes. So if you cannot raise the total component, raise part of it. Oh, it couldn't be easier than this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Ah, if I was having, look at this, my finger. Three straight, one bend this way, the other one curve. If it was like that, naturally, and you're able to make it straight, you raise one finger. Yes. It's a resurrection. Yes. So don't look for the hole yet. Look for a small one you can do. <laughs> <laughs> On a more serious note, if you can't raise the totality of a dead person, raise part of the body of the dead. I saw you on a video, you gave a wonderful testimony of what God did for you. I'm sure you are the one. That's a resurrection. You are living resurrection. It's not because of your whole body died, but there was something in you that was going from you. That God brought back. That's why you are saying it's complete. I know of this young man. You, yeah, you, you. <laughs> I know of this young man. How many years ago now, sir? Oh, six years. Six. What did God do for you? He done a lot of things for me. Yeah, but first of all, uh, well, I had a massive heart attack. Yes. And uh, I got prayed for, and I was all right. How many years ago? Six. Six years ago. Maybe he would not have been here today if it didn't happen that time. Yeah. Now, if you are waiting till you get to the final place, it may be too late. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying tonight. Don't wait for the grave. And don't wait when you are in coma. If your hand is separating from you, let them call it back quickly. If it's your feet, let them call it back quickly. Because if all your parts separate, the whole body may follow. But the earlier each one begins to come back, the better it is. Amen. And God is still raising the dead. Yes. I'm a proof that God raised the dead. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. 58 years later. Last week was my birthday. 58 years later. Look at me. Thousand years later, look at Jesus. We are living proofs that the dead are raised for the fulfillment of the gospel. Heavenly Father, I'm grateful for the courage to teach that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Raise your right hand up, everyone. Touch these hands. By your resurrection power. It's part of the commission. Forgive sins. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. It's commission. It's obligatory. And the fact that many are afraid does not mean it can happen. I pray, Lord, that your mighty hand be manifested. That these lives become dead raisers. Quickness of the dead, healers of the sick, saviors of the lost, and givers of life. Thank you for these hands shall be laid on the sick and they shall recover. And with this prayer request in my hand, whatever the needs are in body, soul, and spirit, may it be met and your name be exalted. Thank you in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Put your hands down. God bless you. Don't be afraid. If the Holy Spirit asks you to pray for the dead, do so. You'll be surprised. We will get the result of this prayer tonight. Did you hear me? We will. We will. We will. God will surprise you. One day you find the person you never thought can come back to life again. By this your hand tonight, miracle can happen. Somebody say amen. amen.